And good afternoon. My name is Ryan Belmore. I'm the owner and publisher of What's Up Noop. It is Wednesday, February 15th, and I appreciate you joining us today. Uh, a couple of different ways that uh, you could participate in this. If you happen to join uh, during our conversation, you can go and watch it anytime afterward on our website, on YouTube, on Facebook, on all of our social media. We also turn it into a podcast where you can share it, listen to it, whatever, however you want to consume it. It is uh, festival season, as they say, uh, sort of. Uh, the Newport Festivals Foundation, which produces the iconic uh, Newport Folk Festival and Newport Jazz Festival, is doing some iconic and legendary things of its own these days and over the last couple of years, and I wanted to talk about it. And today joining us will be Jay Sweet, Executive Director of the Newport Festivals Foundation, as well as my buddy Dan Swain, who is the Development Director. And Jay and Dan join me. Hi, gentlemen. How are you? Good to What's be up, here, good man. sir? There's not much going on these days, is there? <laughs> You're crazy. That's a, that's your opening salvo. Is no, that's uh, to make, not me, my to make me to make me make fun of you. For, I know for thinking that I'm not doing anything right now. I know. Uh, it's <laughs> funny. Uh, you we had all talked recently, and um, you know, I, I, there are so many people uh, that I hear from who go to the festivals for the first time, go every year. Uh, there are people in the community. There are um, people in government um, who who understand about the festivals because it's the big, hot, um, popular thing. But they really don't understand uh, what's going on every single day, which um, I've been going now 11 years to the festivals, 12 years to the festivals. And I know or I think the festivals are sort of a celebration of the work that you're doing year round. And um my goal in doing this is I see all the excitement for the Newport Folk Festival lineup announcements. I hear the excitement about, oh, Newport Jazz should be announcing soon. But, uh, you know, I want to do my part and see if we can help here. Um, get people excited about the work you're doing the three other 350 days of the year. So did I kind of summarize it that it's a celebration? Yeah, I, I <clears throat> I think you've nailed something that's always been a little bit of a difficulty for us. If we could get one ounce of the energy that people put towards the festivals uh, to to uh, to see uh, all the work that the staff does throughout the rest of the year, they'd be even more enamored of what of what we do. Um, and, you know, I think the the most important thing is obviously not only what we do as a cultural institution, kind of worldwide, to to, to that I think most uh, Rhode Islanders and especially Newporters can be proud of. You know, I think it's a I think it's a cultural institution at this point. Um, I think it's really the work that Dan and I'm going to let Dan talk mostly what Dan and our staff does like on island. You know, like, I think, you know, we don't we've never wanted to be look, we'll take we'll take the the accolades and the, and the kudos and whatnot for, as you said, the kind of our big splashy event that celebrates all the work we've done that year that that's really a difference between us and other events is we're not doing a this isn't a big benefit show we're trying to raise money and then we're going to take that money and spend it we 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 are spending it now and then what we do is we like to celebrate all the achievements we've had in the past year on those two weekends uh and you know i think that's something we while we never like to do the quote big check moment, like look at us here, here's us with this thing, and look what the do goodery we're doing in the advocacy work. You know, I think for us, it's always been, and we learned this a lot from George. It's let's just hopefully your actions will speak louder than your words. But I think I appreciate this chance, Ryan, because I think at one point it's confusing. I think people don't understand the actual breadth and depth of what we do. Um, besides the festivals. So I appreciate the opportunity. Of course. And, you know, we've known each other for a while now, as well as Dan. And I, I think what's fascinating is uh, talking. I've gone to Thompson uh, Middle School uh, with both of you, with Deer Tick. And we've, you know, I've watched you. I've written about um, the donations, uh, instruments. And, you know, you two get more excited about those opportunities and those things you're doing, uh, you know, more than some of the things that happen in late July or early August. And I, I think what it's important for people to know is that it's kind of, in my words, it's foundation first. It's the impact we're having in the community. It's what we're doing, sport, musicians, education. And I wonder, Jay, if you could just talk about, you know, why is it so important? You know, you could just run the festivals on their own, I, I assume. 
But why is it so important to have this arm? I, I like the way you put it. I mean, the interesting thing is I have to remind people we are a nonprofit foundation first. And we just happen to throw these festivals. The, the work that we do, yes, are we working on the festivals? We're working on the festivals 14, 15, 16 months in advance. Like we're, we're already on to some things on 2024. Of course, that's a big part of our staff. But there's another huge part of the staff in our day-to-day -day operations that is only worried about what the foundation does. And why I think that's important, honestly, is because it's a, one of our biggest differentiators between us and any other event. And I think that's, I thought the, I, I, you know, we talk about that our job is to create moments of hope through music. That, that's really our job, whether it be at the festivals or, as you said, at Thompson, you know, those are equally because those are both moments of hope. But the ones that fill my cup the most are, you know, I not to, it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's tough sometimes through all the, the excitement of the festivals, you don't see the exact moment that there's a realization on, you know, a kid or a teacher or, or a parent's face when a whole world opens up through an instrument or access to, to music education. I think that's a, that's a whole different, uh, mojo cup filling type of, of moment and it's very immediate it's 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 instantaneous it's not hey i hope people liked the event we'll hear about it later that it's a it's such a it's like hearing applause when you hear ladies and gentlemen welcome kermit the frog that that applause is equal to watching you know a kid open up a hard case that now they get to travel with their instrument instead of just being able to play it at the music room at a school if their school has a music room they get to bring it they get to bring it home and commune with it in the safety of their own thing that the small things are you know, and, and I think I think that's in a weird way, very uh, it exemplifies, I think, a lot of the Rhode Island slash Newport spirit. Right. Hope. I mean, it's it's on the damn motto. Right. It's part of those things that, you know, that that's where that's our job is to create those moments of hope. Yes. The big ones happen out at Fort Adams. But, you know, we're Dan and I specifically are lucky enough to see them weekly, weekly. You know, we, we get to we, we get that same excitement that people do at the festival in that 12 or however many hours, you know, you're there. We get that. We get to feel it. And that's something we wanted to start to share because, you know, we almost feel like, wow, we're getting these incredible experiences the rest of the other weeks out of the year. We have to figure out a better way to start sharing them with the audience. That's hopefully hearing our voices as we're talking now. Dan, the, when it comes to programs and events, um, you know, obviously, uh, you know, we've written a lot about what you're doing in the Newport programs. Last Friday, um, uh, you guys did a program over at Portsmouth Abbey. Um, but when it comes to kind of the what you're doing, it's, you know, some Rhode Islanders might hear just Newport festivals found it. Oh, they're only helping Newport. I mean, you are going far and wide with these programs and activities. Yeah, I mean, we like to say that first and foremost, we need to have our backyard covered, right? Um, I think we feel like as some of the most recognized artistic brands, not only in the state or the country, but the world, the Newport Folk and Jazz Festivals, we feel an immense responsibility to make sure that the programs in our backyard in Newport have high quality music education programs. Um, to us, that is, that is really, it's really a point of pride, right? We would hate to see that the, the music education programs at Rogers or Thompson or Pell were subpar. And so to Jay's credit, over the last five or so years, we've really made sure that we're working uh, first and foremost in Newport. But then we've also expanded beyond that, right? We've done stuff in Providence and we've done a lot with, uh, you know, Riot RI, formerly known as Girls Rock in Providence, really great program doing music education stuff as well. And uh, on a more national level, we also work with the artists that are performing at our festivals to support causes that they care about. Um, that has been our most effective way to enact change in music education is engaging the artists and saying, you know, hey, uh, is there a music ed education program in your hometown that you grew up with that you learned from? We'd love to support it. Is there an after school program? Is there a high school in your town that needs support? We'll, you know, we'll provide a grant and we'll also give it exposure so that people understand how important music education is. So, you know, it's, it's really a two pronged approach. It's first and foremost local, but also uh, utilizing our relationships with artists to make a national impact as well. Uh, Jay or Dan, I'm wondering if, I don't know who gets to deliver that news to the artists, but what is their reaction when they're like, hey, you know, uh, honestly, one, we want you to play, two, we want to help somebody yeah. that we care about. 
It's honestly confusion because no one, <laughs> it's no one else does it. No other festival. And I'm not saying this to like toot our horn or anything like that, but no other festival is going to them and saying, Hey, come play our festival. And also bear with me a second. I need to explain this very strange program that we have, but I promise you're going to love it by the end of it. And then I have to go, I have to actually call the manager or Jay has to call the manager, depending on the artist. And we have to explain to them, we've got this set budget to support music education programs, either locally in Rhode Island or in a hometown, you know, where you're from. And it takes them a minute to understand what we're doing, but then eventually a flip switches and they realize, oh, this is actually a very unique opportunity for me to support a cause that I don't have the time to do because I'm so busy touring and making a middle-class living, which is so incredibly challenging for artists. So they don't have time to be thinking about music education programs. And, and that's not their fault. That's just because of the demands of being an artist. So we like to be that middle person that comes in and says, we know you've got a cause or a music education program that you care about. Give that, let us do the work and we'll do, we'll be the middle person and we'll support the cause with you and we'll do something really cool together. I, I, I do want to say that Dan does get the, the last part of that is the fun part. It's, you'd think that talking with the artist would be fun, but it is, it's more of a, ah, it's more of an aha moment than a, oh my God, thank you so much. But Dan gets the best part of the job because he does most of the heavy lifting is when Dan makes the call to the institution that's about to get surprised with some funds or some support, it's almost disbelief. They're like, I, I don't understand. And when Dan gets to also say, well, by the way, while we may or may not have heard of you, we're giving this gift to you or providing access to whatever it is we are going to provide on behalf of yeah. I mean, the yeah. other day, the other day I, I got to make that phone call on behalf of Billy Strings. And, you know, that was a really special moment for me because and just to reiterate too, every single artist on the Newport Folk and Jazz lineup has the opportunity to pick a program and we make a grant to that. Program. Everyone, every single artist. I make that phone call for every artist. But with Billy's situation, you know, he he picked out this great program in, in eastern Kentucky that uh, basically teaches individuals who have been impacted by the opioid pan pandemic and teaches them how to become luthiers and build guitars. And so I made that phone call and said, hey, we're providing a grant. And by the way, it's on behalf of Billy Strings. And you could hear everyone in the back of the room going, oh man, Billy Strings, we, like he's the best guitar player in the world. Like they were all freaking out and they loved it. So it's the combination of not only providing funds, but also connecting it to an artist to, to let them know that the musicians themselves, they really care about that. And that's huge. And you, what's also interesting, and I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I think it was Camp who, went and said, you know what, we're going to also match it. Or maybe it was Billy. That's it was, right. Yeah. The, the, it, both. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, that's, and by the way, I, that's a great, Ryan, I'm glad you picked it up. The interesting thing there is what that is, is, and, and I think this gets lost in the shuffle too. I'm very excited to draw, draw this around is, you know what the, you know what the, the similarity is between those two artists you just named. They've been to the, they've been, they've been through this before. They've been to the fort. They know what we do. And that's the difference between a new artist might not understand what's happening. They're like, wait, I don't get this. You're, you're giving money to the thing on my behalf. That's great, I think, right? That's great. Whereas the artists where we've done this in the past, that's one of the reasons why we call it, quote, folk family. That's one of the things is, I, I would say that's more the norm with artists who are coming back, who haven't played, who, who, who have already played before in recent times since we started this program. They're ready for it. And they're like, hey, by the way, we're going to we're we're putting some of our money where our mouth at is, too. And that is the exact positive feedback loop you get when you try a program like this and you stick with it. That's what happens is it, it, it grows exponentially through these artists. And that's when they're like, hey, you know what? I'm playing Newport this year. I'm definitely not making. I think you know this and I I'm sorry, but most of your listening on may not assume that. Most of the artists that play for Newport play for, when I say a significant discount, I'm talking to the point where you guys are missing a zero. We get that a lot. Um, you're missing a zero on this offer. Um, that I'm not saying this makes up for it, but, but I do think there's something there that they understand that one of the reasons they're doing this for less is because we're doing so much the other 359 days. That. I think it finally dawns on them. So you're right. The artists, and I appreciate you bringing it up, the artists who are coming back when we do this, a lot of them do match. They'll just say, we love it. We're going to put our money into. Yeah. Because how cool is that? It's like the coolest thing in the world. 
the other reason they do that is because they've become invested in those programs, right? Like they support them one year and then all of a sudden they, they pay attention to all the good stuff that that program is doing. And so when we reach out to them again and say, we want to support them again, they, they know what that program is doing. They've probably visited that program and hung out with the kids for a day. So they want to support her even more. So they match the funds. Now, uh, Dan and Jay, you know, this matching or this uh, giving program with each artist announcement, uh, where are those funds coming from? Let's, you know, uh, I'll act a little dumb right now, but is it all coming from people buying the tickets for the festival? Uh, where is Newport Festival's foundation getting these funds in order to go with 120, 150, however many artists you want to say and go make donations? Most of that is coming from our membership program been really really fortunate to have a really robust membership program and that those uh, membership dues basically we turn around and use them to support those music education programs particularly our artist gives program because members like to see that their funds are being used specifically to support the artists and the causes that they care about uh, that are going to be performing at the festival the next year so most of that is coming from basically donations uh, small donations that we receive from our community um, as you know you know our festivals do not have a massive profit. You know, they struggle to break even, which that's, that's part of being a nonprofit. And so it's not like, you know, we're, we're cashing in on massive ticket sales and turning around and using it for, for that cause. It's, it's really more about the, the support of the local community and small donations. Excellent. Um, so the memberships, and then of course, uh, right on uh, newportfestivalsfoundation.org, uh, Dan, some of the ways that people can give support, uh, get involved uh, besides uh, going to the festival, uh, things like that. Yeah, I mean, uh, newportfestivals.org. You can click the donate button to support us there. Um, obviously, much needed and much supported. So thank you for calling that out, Ryan. I appreciate that. Jay, uh, if, uh, you know, if if the money coming in doubled or tripled or uh, if there was a dream or a goal, uh, you know. What I'm so you, excited. Finish the question. I'm so excited. I want to. I want to answer it. What, what would? You, what do you think you could accomplish? What do you want to accomplish? Like, uh, what is uh, your big? Thank thing? you. I, I've been saying it, and you're. This is breaking news. Uh, the, the teletype. Um, run that along the bottom. No, it, thank you, uh, Dan. Dan. <laughs> Dan's. I already know, Dan. Here's the thing. I. I, I said this out loud once a couple of years ago. And then COVID hit and it kind of fell out of our daily vernacular. And Dan and I have been just tossing this around again. I'm, you're going I'm to announce this right now? Is, no, no, listen, I'm not <laughs> announcing it. I'm just saying. Oh he just said, he said, if I won the lottery, he said, right, if I won much. the lottery. I All have right. not won the lottery yet. So <laughs> if I were to win the lottery, yeah. I, look, we're the smallest state in the union. True? True. Yes, that is a fact. It makes it very easy to imagine if you could say every, by definition, just going to say the word child, but if every child wanted access to music education, wouldn't it be cool if you could say every single student in Rhode Island that wanted access to music education, we are going to be able to say, imagine if a state, if, if the people in powerful positions of the state and government could say, our state has somehow managed to be 100%, you know, music education available to, to 100% of every student. I just think I, it'd be, you could do that. It's not, it's not, it's not like saying we're going to end, you know, these things that are very difficult, homelessness, you know, uh, hunger, wh whatever those things may be that are need to be tackled, need to be faced. Sometimes it's something that to to do a goal that actually might be achievable. And so if you ask me, if I won the lottery, like won one of these 1 billion lotteries, I'm not saying we're, do not hold me to saying I'm doing this. I'm just saying, I think it would be such an amazing thing for this state to say, oh, what are we known for? Music literacy. Like, like I, it would just be so cool. It'd be, the, it'd be, it'd be something that, you know, it just, I don't know. I, I could obviously go on. I'm very passionate about it, but I think, I think it'd be just super, such a cool thing for the state of Rhode Island to claim better than all the other states. And, and we could do it because of its size. We're sort of already doing this in, in a sense, you know, we're prioritizing Aquidneck Island first, right? The, the sort of pilot program is Aquidneck Island, right? So in the last three years, we've had a commitment to the Newport public school system to say, 
every school in the system come to us once a year and we'll provide anything that you need. Any instruments, PA system, whatever it is, we allocate for the last three years, 10K, we've allocated to the schools, to each school, Thompson, Rogers, and Pell. And um, we've provided them with whatever they needed, instruments, you name it. And so that's really on a small scale, that's what we're doing here in Newport. Not, not also the Boys and Girls Club. Yeah. So we also, okay. yes, we also t take care of the Boys and Girls Club to make sure that they have a music education program. So really the underlying thread there is making sure that every student on Aquinnick Island can access high quality music education. And if we could check that box on Aquinnick Island and then expand and expand and expand, how long would it take for us to do the entire state of Rhode Island, right? I mean, that's, that's to, to your question, that's sort of the pipe dream. That's, that's the goal. Um, that we would love to someday achieve. I had uh, Brad Reed, the executive director of Sale Newport on recently, and uh, Jay just reminded me of him because uh, he gets that excitement when he talks about how every fourth grader in Newport Public Schools has the opportunity to go sailing through Sale Newport and just being able to provide every single student in schools with that you know, that's what he gets most excited about. You know, we were talking about the ocean race and it was about having that impact on a child. And, you know, with Jay and uh, uh, Dan's big dream or goal or hope, um, you just wonder what impact that Rhode Island could be the new music I, capital. I, I, I'd like to give a shout out to Brad. And I appreciate that because it's weird. There's that kind of sibling rivalry in a good way. And it's funny because, uh, you know, as somebody who was very fortunate to, to go to school in, in Newport, I, I, when I would tell people, where do you go to school? I would say, I go to school in Newport, Rhode Island. And they would invariably say one or two camps. Oh, isn't that where the Newport Folk and Jazz Festivals are? Or is that where America's Cup, a, a, the most, one of the most famous, it was either sailing, it was either the wind or the music. And one thing I love about Brad is he does have that passion to make sure that that legacy, I'm, I'm, I'm old now, I'm 52. So I'm talking about when I was 13 and 14 years old. So for almost 50, you know, 40 plus years, I love the fact that I get to be the part that's pushing the music narrative continuously and knowing Brad it like I do. I'm so glad that there's someone as passionate as I am about music, about sailing, because those are the two things that historically it gives people from Newport and the state something to be really proud of because I, I think there's two, there are two really positive, positive things. Yeah, they are. And uh, congrats to Brad. He just celebrated on February 2nd, 25 years at sale Newport, which is uh, absolutely incredible. Uh, Dan, we had talked about the membership program and how people can give at newportfestivals.org. Um, with the membership program, um, you have to attend the folk or jazz festival in order to kind of jump on there. Um, obviously, people can just go on newportfestivals.org and donate. Uh, kind of putting you on the spot for a minute. But are there other opportunities uh, where people can get involved, donate, or other programs possibly coming down the road where people will be able to get involved? Yeah. So uh, one new initiative that we have is a partnership with Newport Music. Uh, in town, so the Newport uh, Music Guitar Shop, basically. Up on and, Bellevue. Yeah. Up on Bellevue, yep. And so we just created a program where if anyone has a used instrument, uh, there's an instrument that's sitting in your attic and you haven't touched it in a few years and it's, you know, it's got dust on it, you can take it into the shop and they'll actually evaluate the instrument and decide if the instrument is worth taking in and fixing up. And if it is, uh, they'll take it and they'll give us a call and say, hey, we've got this you know, guitar, we've got this saxophone, it's going to cost us 200 bucks to fix it up and we'll pay that fee to cover the, the cost to fix it up. And then we'll give it to a public school in the area. So uh, we just did that first round of those instruments we gave to uh, Thompson. And so um, if you've got an instrument, that's, that's a good way to get involved in the organization and uh, support music education programs at the same time. Excellent. Jay, what, what, um, you know, one, one note you could put in everybody's pocket that uh, came to a festival uh, one thing you would hope that they would walk away with um, rather than that fuzzy feeling of seeing um, whoever it may be, or um, one thing you could put in everybody in Newport or Quinnick Island, or, you know, what, what do you want everybody to know if you could get one message across to everybody? Wow. It's a tough one. Um, to, the, to, to remember, I, it, it's something I think everybody does. I don't think I'd have to remind them, but I do to, to remind them, that we're a nonprofit. I know that's like to remind them that this is that that, that 
the experience of what they had is they were fortunate to, I always say, were you fortunate enough to be there? And if someone is fortunate to be there, think of how many people would love to be there, but can't be there, is to think of if that experience made you feel the way we hoped it make you feel when you come to the fort. Think of the people that don't ever have a chance at, at that, that at, at allowing music to do what it did if you experienced it happening live at the fort. Like, you know, and, and I just think is, is a reminder of there's a lot of people that don't get a chance to have access to music, period. Not just at the festival. I'm talking about access to being able, I, I, I'm not gonna go down this long story, but I did have an Uber ride the other night and it was a long Uber ride. And in the middle of the Uber ride, I was so under the impression that this 22 year old woman who was driving, she admitted to me, she's like, no, I've never been to a concert. I've never been to a con, not a festival. I've never been to a live music event. And I just realized how much I, I take or we, you know, how much there is a taking for granted of that. So if I were to remind people, not everybody has access to what you just experienced and you can help change that. In fact, by coming to the festival, you did just help change that. That's what I would, uh, I would get across it, it, again. And, and I, I appreciate you allowing us to come on here and kind of echo that, that feeling because it is something that we understand why it's kind of the second storyline or the third storyline. Totally understand it. We're not, we understand the, the, as you said, I think you call it the big lights and the excitement of it. We understand that. We help create that. Um, it's just, it's, it's sometimes I think people, you know, don't read further down the set, you know, further down the fold, so to speak in a story and say, Oh, here are the last three paragraphs of this whole thing about Newport foundation, foundation, foundation. And not to um, kiss your ass because I've never done that, but <laughs> no, um, you certainly. <laughs> no, even when it comes to the impact, you know, normally, um, you know, normally when people start talking about impact, it's you know historical or economic. And you know what I've long told my writers, and um, I was on the board for Fort Adams for uh, seven years, is you know, in my mind, um, the the more important uh, impact is what they're what you're doing in programs and what you're doing to support music and to keep music going, you know, one way to keep the festivals going is, uh, Jay, you've said this, is you need musicians coming up and to play the future festivals. 50 oh years. yeah. I, I, yeah. Everyone who gives me credit for the advocacy, I say, no, I'm very selfish because yeah. without, without another generation, who am I going to sell tickets for people to go see? I need people to learn how to play these instruments so I can have a next generation of people to put on the stages. And if people laugh, but I, you know, the people who the the uh, people who have put in the time, I'm calling it the 10,000 hour rule, right? The people who put in the 10,000 hours to learn how to play an instrument at least well enough to be considered to play on our stages. That pool of people is shrinking. That's just a straight fact. I mean, it's it's a it's a I'm not saying it's a completely limited resource at this point, but I'm saying without without at least adding to the help of creating the resource, the resource of artists who have put in the time you know, that, that, that time to become, quote, a, a maestro or really good at that instrument. And when I say an instrument, instrument, writing songs, whatever, the 10,000 hours of being a musician, that pool, that resource pool is shrinking. So, so the work we're doing is you could look at it as I, I, I kid when I say selfish, but we would like there to be as big a pool as there was five years ago, 10 years ago, five to 10 years in the future. It will just make our job easier to have more artists to choose from. And imagine if some of those artists were local artists too. I mean, for us, the dream is that a kid in our program headlines the stage some, some year. That's, that's, that's the dream. That's, that's the dream, dream, you know? Yeah. That's pretty cool. And if you go to the uh, donate button on newportfestivals.org, um, it says right there, help us keep the music playing, which is uh, mm -hmm. pretty much goes to the point. Um, I know uh, Folk Fest is sold out. Um, you know, people have the opportunity to support, to attend um, soon. Uh, by purchasing uh, Newport Jazz Fest tickets, I assume, as well as any other events that are coming up this summer? Yes, uh, and I'm smiling because I just came from a jazz programming meeting and I couldn't be more excited to, I'm, I'm the one with no fingernails, I'm biting them to, to, I want this jazz lineup to get out there because I think it's a doozy. Um, and I think, I'm just really excited about it. So yes, we're, we're trying. Um, we're, we're kind of just taking a breath after 
the folk on sale. Uh, and we'll, we'll have that uh, jazz. I mean, you know, I know last year's time frame. I, we're trying to do a little better um, than last year's time frame is putting on the jazz tickets. So that's being as nebulous as I can I can be. But we're, we're trying to, let me just say, if anybody's listening, we plan on putting the jazz tickets on. We're trying to put it on sooner than we did last year. Okay. That's, uh, that's breaking good... news there too, man. You're really, you're crushing it. Huh? That's it. And I, I believe last year was um, going off the top of my head somewhere mid-March, March 24th, somewhere around there. I, I actually, you would actually know. <laughs> yeah. I actually don't know what the day, by the way, I didn't have to buy tickets last year. I was very fortunate. I didn't have to buy tickets to the jazz festival. So I actually don't know when it went on sale. Yeah. That sounds right. March, March sounds right. Yeah. One thing I didn't mention is um, while people are uh, looking at the lineup announcements and seeing the parts about um, the uh, donations, um, check out those nonprofits that the artists in the festivals are giving to. And if you have the means and like what you see, uh, support, support. This is an opportunity to learn about them as well as support them as well. Yeah. And, and a note on that, too. It's not you know, if you haven't checked out those programs, they're not typically very standard music education programs. This is not like, you know, just learning how to play an instrument, you know, lessons or something like that. Usually it's a program that goes into a prison system and teaches inmates how to play guitar, or it's a program that works with refugees, or, um, you know, we've had to, uh, multiple different aspects of music education through that program. So the vets, uh, learning, teaching, teaching vets. Yep. You know. Yeah, guitars for vets. So um, it's it's sort of like any any cause that you care about, you can probably find a music cause that aligns with it as well. And um, they're typically pretty fascinating, cool programs. It's pretty neat. Dan, did we uh, miss anything today? Anything else that you wanted to uh, share besides uh, NewportFestivals.org to follow the work as well as support the work? Yeah, I mean, the only other thing that I wanted to mention, we you, you touched on it a little bit um, where you, you talked about Portsmouth Abbey and our visit there. And that's sort of a new program that we're working on right now, where if you're an educator uh, in middle school or high school, you can request that our team comes and speaks to your students about uh, the festivals. And it's our way of sort of engaging and educating the next generation about not only the history of our festivals and the cultural impact that they've had, but also what they're doing right now um, and the sort of what's going on at the festivals currently. And so I'm really excited about that program. And if there are any educators out there in Rhode Island, uh, that are listening and that want that program to come to their school, uh, shoot me an email, dan at newportfestivals.org and, uh, we can talk about it. So yeah, thanks Ryan. No problem. And Jay, anything, uh, that, uh, we didn't get to, I know you and I could talk for hours and hours and hours about this, but, uh, anything, uh, that you think we missed? No, I just, I, no, I would say this. I would say I, I really want to give a big shout out to Dan and Dan and I get to do a lot of these. Um, and we wouldn't be able to do it if there wasn't a whole staff that while I'm talking to you right now is making sure all the plates are spinning on all the sticks and running around the room, making sure all the plates are spinning. Um, you know, I, I'd also maybe one of those pocket in, in everybody's pocket that can hear my voice. The, the, the note that I would put in there is please remember that this is primarily run by, you know, we're a nonprofit organization again, but we are also run primarily by volunteers and very low paid staff. This is a labor of love. Music is love. This is a labor of love. And I think that people, it's very difficult because we know that, you know, we, we saw the on sale at Folk is, is to remind people we're doing, everyone's trying to do the best we can with what we have. And like Rhode Island, we're small and very mighty and very proud. Um, it's just remember, like, there's a there's real people, you know, this isn't a multinational publicly traded, not to name names, uh, music company. This is this is this is a nonprofit, you know, Newport centric, Rhode Island centric group of people who have decided to to spend their hard earned, you know, their time away from their families, everything to try to bring moments of hope through music. And, 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 and I, I take that for granted a lot. I take, I take the hard work that the entire staff and all the volunteers, and I'd like to just say that, remember that when you see somebody, thank, thank the people who are working for us. Cause by the way, everyone's like, they don't just, they most, the amazing thing about this, Ryan, is so many of our volunteers actually don't see any music. What they're actually doing it is for the community, not that that's just a mind blowing fact is 
most of the people who are in the volunteer positions, they do not get to see music. They are literally doing it. I couldn't even tell you the bands. They are doing it because they've done it year after year after year, and they love seeing the same people, and they love providing this amazing cultural institution, this amazing event for the local community. They are doing it as community volunteers. And that is something I think gets lost. And I thank you for giving me that last shout out because without them, I think that's a total differentiator between us and almost every event I've been to. It's pretty much the person that's, you know, waving you on to park. And those, those people are so far away from the music, but yet they're putting in 12 hour days in the sun just so somebody could have a good time. And they're there every year for 30 years. Every year. By the way, I'm a neophyte compared to some of the people that have been volunteering there. Yes. And uh, that's a good note is uh, keep an eye on newportfolk.org as well as um, Jazz Fest um, for any volunteer opportunities that might that's pop right. up as well. So you can uh, become one of them. And ride your bike. There you go. Ride your bike to the thing. That's it. Best I want to way break to the record. I want to break the record. I mean, any festival in, in America that can say 12 to 13 percent of their attendees rode a bike, people don't believe us. They literally do not believe us. And I said, well, you, you, I'll show you the pictures. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you guys taking the time out of your very busy schedule. I realize this is uh, uh, one of the busier time of the years for you as uh, you get lineups uh, set and, uh, you know, all those sorts of programs and, and uh, giving and all of that. So I appreciate you taking the time. Always, Ryan. Always. Um, and I love your hat collection in the background. Oh, yes. Yeah. We got to get you a foundation hat. I'll, I'll send them. We got to get you a foundation. There we go. Yeah, I haven't seen those. I'll have to uh, grab one of those. So, well, I appreciate it, gentlemen. And uh, we will see you very soon at the fort, if not beforehand. So keep up the good work. Thank Thanks, you. everybody. Bye-bye. All right. That is Jay Sweet and Dan Swain, Newport Festivals Foundation, newportfestivals.org, uh, where you can go and uh, keep an eye on all of the good work they're, they're doing, as well as donate, find out about all the programs and giving they are doing. If you missed any portion of this program, you can watch it on What's Up Noop. You can watch it on our website, social media, and as well as in our podcast, which will be up in just a short while. Thanks for watching.